I'm going to ask you to shake off every heaviness, every distraction. Anything that's crowding your mind right now. If you're not feeling good, say, Lord, let me feel good for the next, for the, for the rest of this service. Amen. Is there anybody here that distractions would hinder you? Either you're feeling you have pain or you're feeling bad or you've got something on your mind that's, uh, that's going to draw you away or some circumstances outside, uh, outside of this right now that would hinder you. Is there anybody? Because we're not going to pray for you. Just stand up. If that's you, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. If something, if something is hindering you right now, I want you to stand up because we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to, uh, to, to clear your thinking, clear your mind, to, get, to give you clear focus. Amen. Father, I pray right now for clear focus in each and every one in this house. Lord, there's many distractions today. The greatest, uh, the, the greatest tool that the devil still has is the tool of distractions. The uh, Lord has break our focus and cause us to be derailed. By the time we get ready to do something or focus in on something for you, all of a sudden 15 things come into our mind and we try to deal with them. But Lord, I pray right now that you'll clear our minds, clear our focus, anoint this word as we bring it forth. Uh, Lord, let this be uh, the time where the power of God through the anointing of the Holy Spirit penetrates us, speaks into us. Uh, Lord, we just uh, worship you with uh, preparing us. Lord, prepare us to be a sanctuary. A sanctuary is a place where the word flows. A sanctuary is a place where the Spirit of God can dwell. A sanctuary is a place where the anointing is full. So God, uh, right now, anoint those that are standing. Touch them. Minister. Clear them. Clear their focus. And God, whatever it is uh, that's setting on their minds right now, hey, you'll take care of it at the end of this service. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can, be, you can be seated. The scriptures that we use or the theme that we used last week, we're going to continue this morning on Be Led from Heaven in 2011. We have a sign for the year. 2011 will be the year for, from heaven. I'm believing it's the year that heaven comes down. Jesus said when you pray, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. On earth like it is in heaven. So what he was saying is bring heaven down. What he was saying is could we live in such a manner uh, that heaven would be illuminated, that heaven uh, would, be, uh, would shine bright in the lives of those that don't know God and in the lives of the believers that we could demonstrate heaven in our walk. Praise God. I believe Jesus demonstrated heaven in everything that he did. Thank you for that one amen. I believe Jesus demonstrated heaven in all that he did. I believe his healing power was a healing from heaven. I believe he spoke in the people because of compassion and he touched the hurting and the broken because of heaven. I believe it was a I believe he brought heaven down here on earth. Amen. So I'm going to believe that the power that comes from heaven for you and I today is the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get a witness? Amen. We looked at some things uh, last week in recap. Uh, we looked at some things that would cause uh, us to draw from the power of the Holy Spirit, be led by the Spirit. Uh, uh, the first thing we looked at was, number one, don't box in the Spirit with our small thinking. Amen. Don't box in God with our small thinking. Don't say it can't be done. Jesus said all things are possible. Jesus said all things are possible. Amen. Whatever you can believe for, that's what can be done. And sometimes we, uh, we stop or we quench the Spirit or we, uh, we hinder the move of God because of our small thinking. Amen? Uh, we must yield uh, to the imaginations of the things of God. How many of you know there's no limit to God? No limit. But, the, but we're limited by the way we think. And if we want to break out of the, the box of limitation, it's only going to come through our thinking. Amen? We've got to start thinking like God. We've got to start thinking like Jesus. We've got to start thinking like the Holy Spirit. Amen? And we can say all kind of things that can't happen, but I can tell you all kind of things that can. Amen? You tell me what's going on in your life that's, uh, that's hindering you, and I'll tell you how God can use it to bring you to the next level. Come on, somebody. I'll let you know that God is still on the throne. He still is God of more than enough. He can take any situation that happens in your life. 
Well, Pastor, I couldn't get to church on time uh, because, uh, because my children were all acting up. Good, praise God. God can use that because you can sit them down and say, Listen, next Sunday uh, we're going to line up and uh, we're going to get to church on time because we need to be in the house of God and I'm going I'm to teach you this week what it's like to be diligent. How many of you know God can use anything? Amen. Praise God. Uh, we need to be able to understand that God's ways are not our ways. We've got to think like Him. We must see things through the mind of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know the Holy Spirit was dispatched and given to us? Jesus said, Terry, in Jerusalem, till the Holy Ghost comes upon you, uh, that, you might be, uh, that you might receive power and be witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, the other most parts of the world. There's a power impartation through the, through the Holy Spirit. Amen? There's nothing that He can't do. Second thing we looked at uh, last week was we looked at the fact uh, that we need to speak his vocabulary. We need to speak the things that God speaks. Amen? We need to use the vocabulary that we know that God uses. We need to speak like God speaks. We need to speak like Jesus speaks. The Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance. That's the reason why the Word of God is so important because we learn how to speak and think like God. Amen? Amen? You ever read a book from somebody or, or somebody that you honor and you have respect for and you start reading how they, how they write and pretty if you read enough of their stuff, you'll start thinking like they do. You'll start understanding what makes them think like they do and you'll start connecting and you'll start using their vocabulary. Amen? Amen. How many of you know it's not just the words you say though but it's what comes from the heart? You see, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I just can't. Uh, there's some folks that just know how to, how to talk Christian lingo. Hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. How many, how many of you know it's got to be more than hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God? I mean, every time I say praise the Lord, down inside of my heart, I'm saying my God's able to deliver, praise God. When I say praise the Lord, I'm saying, God, I'm giving you glory and honor today. I'm lifting up your name above every name. I know that you're the God of more than enough. Uh, Ernest said uh, that, that God is the author and a finisher of our faith, praise God. He's the author. He's the one that wrote the book. He's the one that knows me. He's the one that made me. He's the one that formed me. He's the author, praise God. Everything that I, I learn about him, I learn because he's the author and not only the other but the finisher. Amen. Ernest, come down here. Sing that song real quick for me. Come on, run down here. Yeah. I love Ernest the minister because he can sing, praise God. I don't know if I ever heard notes so correct and on target as you was this morning, Ernest. Oh, my goodness. How many of you love Ernest? He's not only a great teacher and a great man of God, but he's an incredible singer. Someone told me one time, Ernest can't sing. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Been my favorite singer ever since. Sing that song for us, Ernest. The greatest love story the world has ever heard Was written unto me in God's holy word In, final, in spite of all my failures, he loved me so much come on, come That on, come on. he sacrificed his life for me for me so that I can live eternally. He was not exclusive in his holy plan. For his love is free, free to every man. His love for you, just like it is for me, that he sacrificed his life for you, for you, so that you can have eternal life too. The world's greatest love story, oh, oh, he loved me so, and he came to let me know, oh, he left his throne in glory, and he sacrificed his life for me, for me, so that I can live eternally. Oh, yes, he sacrificed his life for you, for you, so that you can have eternal life too. Oh, yes, he sacrificed his life for us. Y'all know what the next song we'll be working on in the, in the praise and worship team, right? We... Ernest will give you all the words. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need, to, we need to speak like God speaks. We need to have his vocabulary. Amen. 
We need to, we need to speak the vocabulary. Because if we'll speak his, his vocabulary, you'll stay under his itinerary. Amen. Amen. See, I want to be connected. I want to be connected with who God is. Number three. Are you ready? Anybody taking notes? Number three is fight to stay focused. I said fight to stay focused. Fight, 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 fight. Fight to stay focused. How many of you know one of the biggest hindrances you're going to have is staying focused? How many of you know there's so many distractions today? Amen. I mean, it, you don't have to stay in a meeting very long and somebody's on their cell phone is going to start making noise. And somebody send a text. And, and there's so many things that will break your focus. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden you'll realize uh, there was something that you needed to do in the midst of the time God wants to speak into your heart. That's the reason I wanted to clear your focus this morning. Amen? And we need to be able to stay focused on the things of God because He'll speak into your heart. He'll share with you. He'll minister to you. He'll talk to you if you let Him. Now that's the reason why fasting and prayer is so important. Fight to stay focused. Second Corinthians, if you'll turn there with me. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Paul said, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you uh, by the meekness of and the gentleness of Christ, who is present, am lonely among you, but being absent, am bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present with you, uh, you may be bold uh, with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think as us as if we walked according to the flesh. He's saying, there's those that think we walk according to the flesh, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Amen. We might walk in the flesh, and some might think we're in the flesh, and some might try to identify with the flesh, but Paul says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Why is that? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our weapons are not in the natural. Our weapons are not carnal things. Our weapons are spiritual. Amen? Uh, though our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Somebody say mighty. mighty. But mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. What are distractions? What are the things that would hinder us? Many times they're strongholds. By the time we get ready to press in, all of a sudden uh, we, we're reminded that we need something that our body's crying out for, whether it's food or uh, whether it's something that we think we need. By the time we're ready to get focused on the things of God, uh, there'll be a distraction. And sometimes these distractions, when they become habit-forming, are strongholds. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God by the pulling down of strongholds, casting down, casting down imaginations... Casting down every high thing that exalts itself. Are you, are you with me? Against the knowledge of God. Of bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It's time that we start getting our minds in line with the Word of God. And say, Holy Spirit, let me think like you do. Holy Spirit, line me up uh, with your anointing. Holy Spirit, let me think and meditate on the things of God until I am walking in the things of God. We got to fight these distractions. Your greatest warfare will come uh, to will will come to take you out of His presence. The greatest battle you're going to have is is to be snatched away or pulled away or gradually moved out of His presence back into the natural and start doing battle in in, in the flesh. Whenever we have a sickness, when we got a, a situation in a family, when something's going on with the children, if we're not careful, we know that we need to seek God. We know that He's the answer. He said, whatever you should ask in my name, with faith believing, it shall be done. We know that that's the answer, but if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up in the problem and in the situation, we'll forget that God would rather us uh, seek His face until He moves on our behalf. Because we need to cast down the imaginations. We need to, we need to cast down the argument. We need to cast down the, 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 the battle that goes on between our mind and the spirit. Because if, you'll, if we'll stay 
uh, steadfast to what the Holy Spirit's going to do. He'll guide us and direct us into the problem and back out of the problem with victory instead of us getting bogged down with, that, with, with, with trying to figure it out the way we think it should go. Has anybody here ever tried to work it out yourself on a situation? You try to make it happen. You try to work it out, and it just seems like it was up against a brick wall. And finally, you realize, I don't have any recourse but God. I'm going to let the Lord work this thing out. And then, in short order, things start to come together, and God starts to move. And you start saying, man, why, didn't I, why did I worry so much? Why did I wring my hands? Why did I give so much attention uh, to the things of the flesh? Has that happened to anybody besides me? Has that ever happened? Oh, well, praise God. Hallelujah. We need to, uh, to uh, recognize uh, that we need to uh, have fellowship with Him. We need to, uh, need to connect with Him and Him being the Holy Spirit. Uh, to, and understand that God uh, will give us victory. Uh, to break your focus uh, is, is to, is to uh, not have time, not have connection with God. How do I keep my focus, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Number one, spending time with Him every day. I just talked to my pastor the other day. He's, he's in Florida. He has a house up here in the villages. We're going to have him uh, come preach when I come back. And, and my pastor, uh, he's 80. I think, he's, I think he told me he's 83 years old or something like that. He's, he's getting up there like but Joshua and Caleb. And he walks three miles every day. He walks three miles. I said, Pastor, I said, my goodness. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, you just keep doing it because I'm going to pace after you. I'm going to get up there, get in your footsteps. I'm going to figure out how you do it, and I'm going to do it. And he, he made me feel a little better. He says, he says well, uh, Brother George, you stay pretty busy, so you probably get your exercise. And I'm saying to myself, nothing like walking three miles a day. And I said, Pastor, what do you do when you're walking? Oh, he said, oh, that's the time I meditate. That's the time I pray. That's the time I talk to the Lord. And me and the Lord just have great fellowship together as I'm walking, praise God. How many of you know you've got to meditate and you've got to, and you've got to enter into the presence of God every day? Somehow, some way, you've got to connect. You, it, because what happens, you'll start to feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit. You'll start to feel uh, the pull. You'll start to feel the Holy Spirit starting. Uh, see, but first of all, uh, whenever you start out, you're not going to have a whole lot of revelation. You're not going to feel God. But the more time uh, you give into, his, into being in His presence, the more you're going to feel the anointing, and pretty soon the Holy Spirit will be guiding you every day. Is anybody understanding what I'm talking about this morning? And not only do you need to feel a nudge and feel a pull of God, not only stay in tune with Him, but you have to know His presence. I believe the Holy Spirit is, 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 is trying, to, uh, trying to be dominant in a lot of people's lives and, and, and we're so distracted by so many things we feel so many, we have so many other things to take care of. He's there, but we don't even realize it. There's been times that I know I've worked out some things and, I, and, and I've, I've been pulled in three or four different directions at the same time and just trying to work things out and I would hear a small, still voice say, I'm still here. When you get done struggling over this, I'm still here. When you get, when you get done trying to do it your way, that's okay, I'm not leaving. I'm right here. And then I stop for a moment and I say, Holy Spirit, Take over in this situation. Take over. Work it out. Work it out. And by the time I yield to the presence of God, if I'm working with three or two or three or four different things all at the same time, it just seems like they all just start falling into place. Has that ever happened to anybody besides me? You all know what I'm talking about? You see, you have to be in tune with the Spirit to understand that. Satan's greatest attack is to mess up your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. His greatest attack is to derail your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Why is that? Uh, the reason why he wants to do that is because he'll break the power. The power is in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Ghost has been given to you and I that, we, that he can take up residence. Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless. 
I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm not going to leave you in a position uh, where, where you're destitute and desolate. He says, I'm going to, the Holy Spirit will pull up alongside of you. We'll attach to you. Uh, we'll take up residence. Uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, abide within you. And that when you have a need and something's going on, you can cry out. And I don't think we ought to depend on the Holy Spirit just every time we have a problem. I don't think it always always ought to be uh, that he's our fire escape. You know, he, he he's our he's our emergency parachute. I think he ought to be the one that in the good times and the bad times he's there. And when we're feeling good, we're giving thanks. Whenever we know things are going well, we say, I thank you that you're right next to me. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome to walk in my life. Praise God. The Lord, I thank you for the victory today. There's two times that you ought to praise the Lord. When you feel like it and when you don't. You ever, have you ever been down the hall and, and someone said, well, if you just praise the Lord, and you say, I don't feel like praising the Lord. Anybody ever felt like not praising the Lord? I have. There's been times I just didn't feel like it. But let me tell you, there's two times to praise Him. But when you feel like it, when you know, there's two, more, there's two other times that you need to praise the Lord. When you're in trouble and when you're out of trouble. Is that right? Well, I just, I just cry out when I'm in trouble. Well, how about when you're not in trouble? What's wrong with leaning on the Lord? Amen? Praise God. You see, we need to understand, we still have, if we're out of fellowship, if we're out of fellowship, now in Psalm 16, it's 16, 11, you need to turn over there with me. Psalm 16, okay, if we use some scripture this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to speak to some of us this morning. He's going to speak into our hearts. Now Psalm 16, 11 says, you will show me the path of life. How many of you interested in letting the Holy Spirit show you the path of life? I want to know the path of life. Satan doesn't come to give life. He comes to steal and to, and to kill and destroy. Jesus comes to give life. So Jesus is the path of life. Amen? You shall show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. When I'm connected with him and he's showing me the path of life, uh, then... Then in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. How about when I'm in trouble? Still fullness of joy. How about when I'm facing a problem? Still fullness of joy. How about when I don't have the answer? Still fullness of joy because the Holy Spirit is pulled up alongside of you. And, when, and if you allow Him to move in your life, you'll be amazed how the Holy Ghost will work things out for you. At your, at your right hand, or pleasure forevermore. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And God wants us to walk in His goodness. He wants to walk in His pleasure. Amen? In His presence is fullness of joy. What does that mean? Uh, that means uh, you, if, if you're out of His presence, if you're away from Him, uh, that means you still have citizenship, but you don't have fellowship. How I many of you know if, you, if you're not walking in the presence of the Lord, that doesn't mean you're lost. That doesn't mean you've lost everything, but that means you still have citizenship. How I many of you know citizenship is your right for heaven? Citizenship is your sons and daughters of the Most High God. Citizenship is uh, you belong to Him. Uh, but I want to do more than just say I belong to Him. I want to have fellowship with Him. I want to know He's there. I want to feel His presence. Are you with me? And so it's important that it's not just citizenship, but it's fellowship. The power of your fellowship is connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the one that makes the connection. Amen? Amen? You see, hell can't come against the presence of God. Hell can't break the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, the, the greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. I got victory in the things of God. I need to have the Holy Spirit come down from heaven this year and guide and direct me like never before. I want to be led. I want to be led by heaven principles. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Then number four, if we are going to be led from heaven and by the Spirit, we have to listen to the still small voice. We have to cancel out some of the noises of 
our everyday activity. We have to cancel out the noises of life. We need to cancel out some of those things that are so distracting. Are you with me? Now turn with me to Acts chapter 13, if you will. Acts chapter 13. And verse 2, Acts 13. How many of you know if we're gonna if if, if we're gonna feel the presence of God, we're gonna have to minister to the Lord. Minister to the Lord. How many of you know when we come to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Thursday night, uh, we do minister to the Lord corporately? But how many of you know that's just preparation to be able to minister to the Lord privately? See, if all we ever do is praise God when we come in the house here, all we ever do is, is give God a thanksgiving when we come to church three times a week, uh, we're, uh, we're really not connecting with the presence of God on a regular basis. As they ministered to the Lord. You see, they were ministering to the Lord. Uh, they were giving God glory. They were uh, ministering to Him. They were touching the hem of His garment. They were uh, they was, they was speaking and, and sweet fragrance going up into the throne room uh, of, of heaven. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And they fasted. Somebody say fasting. We're going to go on a week of fasting next week. I want to invite you to fast with me. Pastor, you mean i got to go from Monday until Saturday without nothing to eat? No, I'm not asking you to do that. But I'm asking you to take something that you know would be a sacrifice and fast it because what that will do is it will be a trigger. That's a reminder for you to pray. There's some of you like some particular, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe it's Starbucks. Who knows? And you've got a particular thing that is your, is your ritual, your tradition. Uh, what's wrong with fasting that particular thing? And every time uh, you're getting ready to do that, you say, Oh, wait a minute, I'm going to pray. I'm going to agree with Pastor to, uh, right now that, uh, that God's going to minister to him and speak into him. I'm going to agree that the body of Christ is going to get closer to God this year. I'm going uh, to agree for the needs uh, that he's praying about. Come in agreement with me. You don't have to fast for a week, but you can fast something. You can set aside something that will trigger a prayer. Is anybody following me? Well, I don't know if I can do that. Try it and see. You see, whenever you start crucifying the flesh, whenever you quit letting the flesh rule, amen, if there's something that we're doing and we can't, we can't stop it, guess what? The flesh is ruling in that area of our life. And if you let the flesh rule uh, in, in enough things, pretty soon you're, uh, you're out of focus. You're distracted. <clears throat> What's wrong with saying to the flesh, flesh, you better quit complaining. If you're not going to have that coffee this morning, I'll put you on a weak fast and you won't get nothing. So you've got to behave yourself. I have a little board meeting sometimes. With my flesh. I have a board me. We wake up and I feel some opposition and, and, and the body's wanting to go this way and wanting to growl and complain. I say, wait a minute now. You want to complain about that? I'll put you on a on a twenty one day fast. Then what are you gonna do? So we need to be able to deal with those things. Amen. Speak those things and, and, and make the difference. And it says, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said. Now how many of you can see Fasting will release the power of the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart. Can you see that? You see, they fasted and the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit spoke as they tuned up their spirit man, as they, as they crucified the flesh, and as they set aside some things that was pleasurable, and they, uh, they put themselves, lined themselves up in position to hear from God. It said, the Holy Spirit spoke to them, now here's what he said. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them out. Hallelujah. How many of you can see fasting and prayer? Uh, fasting is related to the power or the presence of the Holy Ghost. Can anybody see that? Hallelujah. Turn with me to Second Kings if you would. I'm sorry, 1 Kings. 1 Kings in chapter 19. 1 Kings in chapter 19 and verse 12. You know the story about Elijah. He goes out and he brings down fire to the, uh, to the prophets of Baal. And he challenges their God. And, 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 and Almighty God, Jehovah Jireh, uh, El Shaddai comes down and moves mightily. And he, he performs these great miracles. He brings rain down. He outruns the chariots. 
until uh, there was a, a, a little lady by the name of Jezebel that put fear in him. When he got into town, he ran out, out of the city and went into a cave. How many of you know sometimes you've got to be careful after you do a lot of great mighty things uh, that if you don't have some refreshing, if you, don't, if you don't restore yourself, a lot of times depression will come in and heaviness will move in on you and you'll think it was a failure whenever uh, you was being anointed and used by God. And so we, got, we, ought to, we have to know how to refresh ourselves. Amen? So Elijah went to the cave. And, and as in his cave, uh, the, the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord spoke. Then he said, uh, go out and stand on the mountain in verse 11 of, cha- of chapter 19 of verse Kings before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. Oh, praise God. You see, if you'll spend some time in his presence and, and you'll spend some time uh, saturated with the Holy Ghost, uh, God will show up. I said, God will show up. I've been in situations where, uh, praise God, if, if God didn't show up, uh, nothing was going to work. God didn't show up, nothing was going to get fixed. If God didn't, he, even when I go to fix something, a lot of people say, my pastor, you can fix anything. Well, uh, a lot of people are fooled to think that, but what I do is I say, Lord, I need your help. I don't know how to fix this thing. I don't know what I'm doing here, God. I really need your, I really need your intervention. And somehow, all of a sudden, my hands start working, and all of a sudden, I'll fix it. I'll be as surprised as you will about it. The Holy Ghost will, will intervene in the smallest things and the greatest things. Yeah. I've dealt with some incredible situations in, in ministering to people and in counseling through the years and, 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 and not know what to do and just say, I, I just need a minute. I've got to seek God about this. And start to praying and asking God, say, Holy Ghost, I need you. Holy Spirit, intervene. And the Spirit of God would usher in His presence and all of a sudden there would be the right answer, the right time for the right thing, and everything would fall in place. i just say, Hallelujah, thank you, God. You're a God of more than enough. And so he went to the, and, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. Get a picture of this. Elijah standing outside the cave, and, and, the, and all of a sudden God says, Stand out in that cave. Get out of that cave. How many of you know a lot of time we better get out of the cave? You know, we get depressed and we get feeling bad and we draw back and, and we, somebody hurt our feelings and, and somebody uh, said something that, that offended us. And, and so uh, we draw back. We get in our own little cave and we think that's where we ought to be. And God says, get out of that cave. Get out there where I can speak to you. Get out where I can change things in your life. Get out there where I can raise you up. And he went out there and, and all of a sudden there was an earthquake and rocks were breaking. And get the picture of that. And, 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 and the mountains were falling down and, and things were falling apart. And, and, but the Lord wasn't in the wind and he wasn't in the earthquake and he wasn't in the rocks. Are you with me? And the earthquake came but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake either. And after the earthquake a fire came but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after that, it was a small, still voice. Just a little voice. Sometimes we think there has to be uh, fireworks and explosions. And we think God has to show up with all of his dynamite uh, power. And we haven't seen God's dynamite power, really. All God has to do is tap his big toe and the whole world turn upside down. Amen? Someone said every... Someone said... Every time uh, the thunder and the lightning starts, it's just God tapping his big toe. The power of God is unbelievable, but sometimes we think that's where we're going to hear from God. God is saying, if you'll have an ear to hear me, I'll speak to you. There's a small, still voice. Has anybody ever heard the small, still voice of the Lord in your spirit, man? You know God has told you something. You, you know that your inner man had a witness. You know, you've been seeking God, you've been praying, you've been asking God for something. And it started, revelation started to come through the small, still voice. Amen. I believe God wants to speak to us in the small, still voice. Turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you would, for a moment. You know the story about David? 
Remember, David was going to go after the great giant, great giant Goliath. He went and he put Saul's armor on. None of it fit. Saul's armor was way too big, and he tried to walk in it, and 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 he couldn't drag this heavy armor. He couldn't he he, he couldn't operate the way uh, the way he knew he could operate in, in the in the freedom of the Lord. So he said, "I got to take this mess off. I I can't do battle in this." And and, and he took an old rag and he walked down along the, the brook and he uh, reached in there and he picked up five smooth stones. How I many of you know that was the Holy Ghost telling him to do that? I mean, he might have been accurate on, on the sling, and he might have practiced out there as a shepherd boy, uh, but God spoke. And said he took his staff in his hand in verse 40 of First Samuel, chapter 17, and it said, and he, close to himself, he picked out five smooth stones from the brook, and he put them in his shepherd's bag and in the pouch which he had. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And you know the rest of the story. So you've got to know when to hear from God, and you've got to let the Spirit lead us. And you got to, I don't think God boomed out with a great big loud voice. I think it was a small, still voice. When you hear it most of the time, it's for you. First Samuel, you have to turn there because of time. First Samuel chapter 3. Uh, uh, Samuel uh, is just a lad. He's been, in, he's been raised in Eli's house. Eli was the priest of the temple. Uh, Hannah took her son Samuel and said, if I could, she was barren, said, if I could have a son, I'll dedicate him to you. And, and she dedicated Samuel to the Lord. And he was, raised, uh, he, was, he was raised by Eli in the temple. And now he's a young lad, and he goes, and he goes to bed one night, and he hears a voice. He jumps up and he runs to Eli and says, Eli, Eli, did you speak to me? He says, I didn't speak to you, son. He goes back and he says, go back, lay down. He hears a voice again. He comes. Eli, Eli, did you speak to me? He says, no. But son, listen, go back and lay down. When you hear the voice the next time, say, speak, Lord, thy servant listens. I wonder if we need to if we need if we need to say more often when we hear uh, when we hear the things that God wants to say to us, speak, Lord. Your servant listens. Amen. You don't have to ask anybody uh, for a word. You don't have to say, hey, let me go run, find a prophet. Uh, let me go uh, find somebody that will uh, go from uh, this prophecy conference to another. What you need to do is you need to listen to the voice of God. And when God speaks, say, speak, Lord, that thy servant listens. I'm here to hear your voice, Lord. Sometimes he's speaking to you individually. He wants to speak into our heart. Amen? Hallelujah. Remember, the crowds are never on the starting line of any race. Did you hear me? The crowds are never on the starting line. The crowd is always at the finish line. So if you're not getting cheered every day, if you're not getting rooted on by a whole bunch of people, if you're not getting a lot of pats in the back, the crowds are never at the starting line. Wait till you finish the race, praise God. Wait till you cross the finish line. And God will say, well done, thy just and faithful servant. Uh, then the time uh, for shouting and rejoicing. Right now we're running the race. And let's stay in there and stay in tune to the Lord. Number five. If we're going to enjoy the presence of God and if we're going to be led by the power of heaven, know the presence, know the presence of the Holy Spirit. And know how to usher in His presence through worship. If you're not a worshiper and a praiser, you're probably not going to be able to usher in the presence of God. We have to be praisers and worshipers, church. we got to usher in His anointing. Don't get trapped with the, uh, with the tactics of the devil that's always pulling us away and distracting us or making you think worship is important. If, he, if we worship God, He'll fight for you. If you worship God in, in, the, in, the, in the presence of His holiness, he'll, he'll fight your battles and you'll win the battles. Remember Jehoshaphat over there in, 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 in Chronicles where Jehoshaphat had three armies coming against him, three armies coming against him, and it says uh, that, he, uh, that, that he knew that, that this was going to happen, so he, when he found out, he called all of Israel together, and they gathered in the house of God, and they fasted and prayed to get a word. You see, when you ask God uh, for a word, He'll deliver. And what happened was, uh, God didn't say, send your warriors out and send your mighty men out to fight. He said, send the singers out. 
And when the singers went out that day and started to praise God and worship God, I believe they praised Him in the Holy Ghost. I believe they praised Him in the Spirit. I believe they were singing in tongues. I believe those people got so confused that they didn't know what to do, so they started killing each other. The enemy started killing each other. And they, they had such a great victory that it took them three days to bring all the spoils in that they collected from the battle. And not one arrow was shot. Not one sword had to go out because they was praisers. And the power of praise brought the anointing. The power of praise broke the back of the enemy. The power of praise will bring healing in your life. The power of praise will release the anointing of God so that the Holy Spirit will move in your behalf. Somebody give the Lord a big hand clap. Amen. Number six in closing. Fasting and prayer needs to be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you read about Nehemiah, when he got ready to build the walls back, and after the walls were complete, they got together and they fasted and they prayed, and the anointing of God moved. We read Acts 13 and chapter 2, where it said, and they, they fasted and the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, you know the story of Jesus. It said he went out in the wilderness... He was drawn by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Amen. Think about that. He was drawn into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. The temptation of the devil was part of his training. The temptation of the devil was part of his preparation. Somebody say preparation. preparation. Jesus was sent out by the Spirit to fast and to pray. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights of being tempted, of being tested. Uh, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life were the three things uh, that was, uh, the, the, the devil used to try to pull him down. But Jesus didn't give in. He kept saying, but the Word says. But the Word says. But the Word says. He stood upon the Word of God. And here's an interesting thing in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. It says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Church, listen. I'm going to request this from you this week. As I go off and fast and pray and seek God in your behalf and in behalf of this church and get a fresh word for the coming year, here's my desire. Are you ready? Here's my desire, that I will come back after a week of fasting and prayer and I will return in the power of the Spirit. Amen. I want to return in the power of the Spirit, Amen. fresh and anointed and touched and energized and, and, and full of God's presence and full of the Word of God. Pray that we'll come back and return in the power of the Spirit. Listen. I trust that this message will tune you up to draw from the presence of the Holy Ghost like you haven't been for a while. Press in, press in, press in. Sacrifice, pay the price, whatever it is. Until the Holy Spirit raises you up and speaks into your heart and moves in your behalf and fights your battles and, 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 and intervenes in the circumstances that you feel like the greatest battle in your life right now. How many of you believe God is, is more desirable, more desirable to pull up alongside of you and live your life with you than sometimes we're, we're willing to yield to Him? Amen. I don't care what your battle is. I don't care if you're fighting a, a, an addiction. I don't care if you're fighting some kind of a situation that you, uh, you've been crying out, Oh, God, I need victory over this. He is able. He is able to deliver you. He is able to see you through in whatever the problem is in your life. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust the Holy Spirit this year to be bigger in your life than He ever has before.